When I'm not immersing myself in some RPG world, one of my favorite genres of video games to play are scrolling two-dimensional shooters, also known by some as shmups. I own tons of these on pretty much any console or handheld where these were released. There's only one problem. I'm totally awful at these games. If you put all the shooters that I beat in one pile and all the ones that I started but never got anywhere in another, it would look like a mountain next to a molehill, and the games beat would definitely not be the mountain. To make matters worse, many of those beaten games were with unlimited continues or extra live cheat codes. Hardly a crowning achievement. So, over the last few months, I've been working at learning how to play these games with the goal of developing my skills enough that I could at least one credit clear, aka 1cc, the easy modes and practice towards the 1cc of normal difficulty modes. There are two basic types of shooters, and I at first wanted to balance my skills between the two. The first type is the more traditional shooter. This includes games like Gradius or R-Type. These type of games feature enemies that are usually firing bullets directly at you, as well as charging towards you. A lot of times these games rely on weapon power-up systems and gameplay gimmicks that you're required to master to successfully play the game. These games require skillful aim to take out enemies as quickly as possible, as you tend to shoot single bullets that are only a few pixels wide. Each of these games are different enough that mastering a game like Gradius won't translate to being skillful at something like, say, Truxton. Here are a few examples of the type of traditional shooter gameplay. In Gradius, you need to understand and strategize how you spend your power-ups on the power-up bar to maximize your ability to survive. You balance speed up, weapons, and the follower options in order to compete against the waves of enemies that you'll encounter. Another example is R-Type. In this series of games, you have a force pod that can connect to either the front or back of your ship, or float around the screen on its own. It fires powered up weapons and blocks bullets. Throughout the game, you'll have to learn when and how to attach it to your ship and when to let it roam free on the screen, as the type of weapon it fires varies depending on whether it's connected or free roaming. The other type of shooter is the Danmaku style game. These are also referred to as bullet hell shooters. In these types, most bullets from enemies are fired in patterned waves onto the screen and aren't generally aimed towards you, though some bullets do target your ship or general area. With the curtains of bullets, the idea is to navigate the patterns and kill enemies as quickly as possible to simply reduce the number of bullets on screen and prevent overlapping patterns of bullet curtains engulfing you. The most famous of these type of games are the shmups developed by the Cave Company. These includes games like Dodonpachi, Mushihima-sama, Espgaluda, and Ketsui to name only a few. Another great series of Danmaku titles are the Toho Project games, a series of PC shooters with nearly two dozen titles and billed as a great set of games to learn many of the shooter fundamentals. As I started seriously playing these games, I started to realize that I like the Danmaku shooters far more than the traditional ones and will probably be focusing a lot more on those in the future. I started my shmup journey by finding tips and instructions from people far more knowledgeable than I am. I managed to find two great resources here on YouTube that I mostly learned from. I'll link them in the description, so check them out if you're interested. The first is Shmup Junkie. I've been following him for quite some time since he also reviews a lot of shmups that are released on modern consoles. The other person who I learned about through Shmup Junkie is the Electric Underground. This guy is amazing at Danmaku shooters and has a series of learning the fundamentals. Among the things I learned is positioning and screen control, movement, and dealing with boss patterns. I also, through the Electric Underground's website, got a list of good beginner shooters with acceptable beginner challenges to work towards. To my surprise, several games that I already owned were on that list, so that's where I started. But before I started playing, I decided to make sure that I had the hardware and setup that I wanted. This is more of a vanity project for me and is by no means necessary to learning or playing these games. I decided that I wanted to learn to use arcade sticks, and I got all the adapters to connect my Konami Hyperstick to as many consoles as possible. I like the Hyperstick because it has a Simitsu LS56 joystick lever, which is an incredibly short throw distance, making it so you barely have to push the stick to activate it. I also made some modifications to my 8-bit Doe arcade stick. Since I could use it on some consoles that the Hyperstick didn't work with, I swapped out the lever within LS56 and the buttons for Sanwa Arcade Quality Buttons. This way, regardless of which one I use, I get the same general experience. I also put this sparkly ball on top of my 8-bit dough, because why not? 
Finally, I reorganized my desk area and purchased a new IPS gaming monitor that could be rotated into the vertical position. This allows me to play games in Tate mode, aka vertical mode, using more screen pixels for the game itself on vertical shooters. Again, not necessary and more than likely only an aesthetic choice rather than improving the functional game experience, but it's something I've wanted to do for a few years now. The first game and challenge that I took up was completing with continues on the easy difficulty Airzonk for the TurboGrafx-16. Completing this challenge wasn't too difficult. It took me about six to eight hours and I managed to beat it without using any continues. So challenge completed and exceeded. Though I was pretty conscious about the shmup fundamentals, it wasn't easy to implement in this game. The game is constantly giving you new weapons, and not only is your sprite very big, but your companion cyborg is also pretty big, making it hard to dodge bullets effectively or even see them easily. Bullets are above all the other sprites, and there really wasn't any flicker or major slowdown, yet bullet size and color made it blend in with the background a lot. I spent most of the game using the small zonk power-up so I could reduce my hitbox considerably. Next, I tried Star Parodier, also on the TurboGrafx-16. But I don't own a real copy, so I played it on a TurboGrafx-16 mini console. This one was built by Hudson as a beginner's game for the Star Soldier series. So given Hudson's fair, yet challenging easy mode found in Air Zonk, I was expecting the same from this title. Easy was a bit too easy for the first four levels, then all of a sudden, the next few levels were nearly impossible without using continues. Like most traditional shooters, if you die, you lose all your power-ups, and killing enemies and surviving higher stages is almost impossible at this point. On top of that, even setting the ship speed to slow, you're unable to make small position corrections. Though very responsive, your ship will jump in giant spurts across the screen in the direction you want to go and usually collides into a different bullet from the one you were trying to avoid in the first place. Finally, I completed this one using probably about 50 continues and really didn't feel like trying to reduce that number. I'm pretty much done with that game. Next, I tried some Danmaku shooters, starting with the cave developed Mushihima-sama Futari version 1.5 for the Xbox 360. This is an import but will play on a North American NTSC Xbox 360. If you're looking for this one, it's starting to get expensive, but you can get it in the Xbox Live service. Just look for Mushihima-sama, since Microsoft literally misspelled most of the name on the storefront. This game has a novice difficulty, where you can play the original, Mania, and Ultra modes. My goal was to 1cc each one of these. Each mode has a different chaining and scoring rules, but I wasn't concerned about that on this playthrough. I was pleasantly surprised at how much more control you have in these games than traditional shooters. When using your focusing laser, you can move incredibly small distances, allowing you to avoid bullets with extreme precision, even maneuvering in between two very close together bullets. On top of that, your hitbox is a little circle at the center of your sprite, and since it's visible, it's always easy to adjust your position perfectly. The glowing bullets from enemies made them stand out from the rest of the chaos on the screen. My only complaint is sometimes enemies, like the mantises in level 4, are hard to see as their sprite is a lower layer from all the bullets, and they come out of hiding mid-screen. I guess I'll just have to memorize where they're supposed to be. I was also very unimpressed with how much slowdown there was on the Xbox 360. This is crazy that a, such a new console has such a problem putting sprites on the screen. The novice mode is nowhere near as many bullets in the curtain patterns as the normal difficulty, and they move much slower. This is great, as I was able to learn the basic patterns and how to dodge them. When you do get hit in novice mode, the game automatically launches one of your bombs to save you from death. Once you're out of bombs, the next hit will take a life from you. This is great for learning the patterns and just learning how to play in general. Unlike traditional shooters where enemies aim and charge at you, Felt that the enemy patterns were designed to corral you into the sides and corner of the screen where you have limited directions to avoid bullets. I died a lot, but every time I knew it was my fault for not thinking ahead and not understanding the patterns fully or just making a mistake. But every time I died, the next time I got a little farther into the game. Luckily, this game and many like them have a replay function, so I could watch my failed runs as well and figure out what I was doing wrong in certain areas. I was able to 1cc all three modes in Novice 
within about 12 to 14 hours, and I'm incredibly happy with being able to do this. For starting these challenges, I could never have imagined completing games like this without using a continue. The final beginner challenge that I'm working on right now is beating Toho 10 Mountain of Faith on a single credit. I picked 10 because players seem to rate this one as one of the easier ones that doesn't have strange and unique gameplay elements to it. I know Toho 6 and 8 are usually cited as the easiest entry points for learning, but I didn't want to go through the hassle of importing a disc from Japan and trying to get it working on a modern PC. Mountain of Faith was available on Steam, and it worked out of the box with my PC and vertical monitor perfectly. Playing through a Danmaku game with knowledge of how you're actually supposed to play them has given me a true appreciation of the complex design of these games. So much time and care was put into making these bullet patterns, and I get a great sense of accomplishment when I finally figured out how to navigate them perfectly. I don't have countless hours every day to practice, so don't expect me to be breaking any world records anytime soon. But since completing all the beginner modes, I'm currently practicing the arcade standard mode in Mushihima Sama Futari, and I've managed to get to the level 4 boss on a single continue. And I'm enjoying every minute of playing through this and learning my route to a one credit completion of this mode as well. Many people see these games and feel understandably intimidated by them. The amount of bullets on screen is absolutely insane, and the prospect of playing the same short levels over and over again can seem overwhelming. On top of that, the technique to play these games is very different from what most casual players might think of, but if you're willing to spend a little bit of time at the beginning learning those techniques, the games could be dozens, even hundreds of hours of fun. If any part of this video has sparked interest in playing more shmups, check out some of the resources that I included in the description. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.